Hello, I am Brother Tyler, and this is the Book of Mormon Scripture Challenge. We have been following the challenge of 2 Nephi 3.12 to use the Book of Mormon and the Bible to prove our doctrines. Recently, we have been focusing on the character of God. The other day, I was reading a post from a fellow Latter-day Saint who used a quote from Augustine as proof that God has a physical body. And I'm sad to say it was cherry-picked to give the impression. First of all, Augustine was raised with the belief that God had a physical form, as you and me, but left that belief. If you are thinking this is the beginning of an apostasy, then I encourage you to look even further. Origen is a church father and is widely regarded as one of the most important Christian theologians. He was born in 186 AD, just over 100 years after some of the original church leaders would have died. And on the belief of of their days on God. Origen says in Homilies on Genesis and Exodus, the Jews indeed, but also some of our own people, suppose that God should be understood as a man, that is, adorned with human members and human appearances. But the philosophers despise these stories as fabulous and formed in the likeness of poetic fictions. Origen's descriptions of God as a physical being being viewed as an abominable idea was very young in the church. 200 years later, Augustine of Hippo, in Book 7, Chapter 1, wrote, I no longer thought of thee, O God, by the analogy of a human body. Ever since I inclined my ear to philosophy, I have avoided this error. He continues his conception of God as incorporeal, or not having a body. He also states, There are some who take for granted that God himself is wholly corporeal, and they suppose that whatever is not corporeal is not substance at all. I think that these are to be avoided altogether. Augustine wrote that God is not nothing but something, and avidly wrote bishops with this corporeal view, telling them, let flesh drunk with carnal thoughts hear this. God is spirit. If you are unable to clear the eye of your mind entirely of this seeming cloud of corporal images, imagine them carefully within yourself. Give judgment then against yourself in your own favor. If you are unable to drive from the eye of your mind these manifold f fanciful images of corporal qualities, and win the victory from your own defeat. These words were not taken lightly and led to several conversations that led to help us understand why did Augustine leave the view of a corporal God for an incorporal God? Many reasons. Throughout the scriptures, one principally being that a God with a body is a changeable being, and if God is changeable, then he's not God. The scriptures tell us that God is the Lord Omnipotent, who reigneth, who was, and is from all eternity to all eternity. And God, knowing all things, being from everlasting to everlasting. And that God is not a partial God, neither a changeable being, but he is unchangeable from all eternity to all eternity. And for we do not read that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in him there is no variables, neither shadow of changing. And now, if ye have imagined upon yourself a God who doth vary, and in whom there is a shadow of changing, then have ye imagined upon yourself a God who is not a God of miracles? We have seen from the Book of Mormon and Bible that God is a personage of spirit, glory, and power, possessing all perfection and fullness. The Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, is a personage of tabernacle, made and fashioned like unto man. Just as Joseph Smith wrote in May of 1835. But in the final two years of Joseph's life, he left this teaching to tell us that the Father has a body of flesh and bones, as tangible as man's. Joseph ended his life teaching, We have imagined and supposed that God was a God from all eternity. I will refute that idea and take away the veil so that ye may see. These ideas are incomprehensible to some, but they are simple. It is the first principle of the gospel to know for certainty the character of God and to know that we may converse with him as one man converses with another and that he was once a man like us. Yea, that God himself, the father of all, dwelt on an earth, 
the same as Jesus Christ himself did, and I will show it from the Bible. Joseph then spent the duration of the King Follett sermon taking apart Genesis 1, the very same chapter that most of the early church fathers that converted to corporal stances used to support their stance with a literal interpretation. However, to uphold this view, we have to do as Joseph did and refute the Book of Mormon and the Bible because the scriptures do not teach a being of flesh, but one of spirit. Alma, Amulek, Amaron, all taught of a spiritual God, as did Jesus. My dear brethren and sisters, I have put these studies together because we need to start a conversation in the church about the character of God. This conversation is a hundred years overdue. President Nelson, in April of 2020, General Conference, declared in the new proclamation that God bodily appeared with Christ in Joseph's first vision, as recorded in 1838, rather than how Joseph first recorded it in 1832. I do not think this is an issue that we can solve by declaration. Gordon B. Hinckley, while being interviewed, he was asked, Is this the teaching of the church today, that God the Father was once a man like we are? To which Gordon B. Hinckley said, I do not know that we teach it. I do not know that we emphasize it. I haven't heard it discussed for a long time in public discourse. I don't know. I don't know all the circumstances under which that statement was made. I understand the philosophical background behind it. But I do not know a lot about it. And I don't know that others know a lot about it. As the prophet of the church, he should have declared it as the truth, as President Nelson did, but he did not. If you have been watching the last dozen episodes where I line out the scriptures that show the character of God, you would understand why Hinckley would not feel that it is church doctrine. And I ask you today to help me start the conversation. If you haven't already watched this series on the character of God, then please watch it right here and help me answer. Is God a physical being in which he patterned us after? Or is he a being of spirit, glory, and power, possessing all perfection and fullness, as Joseph once said? Until next time.